Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Passing It On. They say a great cook is not born just a great cook. He learns by doing it. So today I have with me Auntie Lisa. Lisa. Auntie Lisa, Lisa where Naidu. Lisa Naidu. And where were you born? I was born in Overpots. Okay, and how many uh, siblings? We are five with me, okay. three sisters and two brothers. Okay, and I heard that your husband is quite fussy when it comes to his meal. Oh yes, he don't like fish curry. Uh, but we're making fish <laughs> curry today. It. <laughs> okay, so that's going to be a really shocker yes, for him. So yes. today, Auntie Lisa is going to take us on a journey how to create a fish curry, traditional fish curry. Okay, now for the ingredients. Auntie Lisa, would you like to run us through the ingredients, what you have here? Yeah, I have the mustard and the jeera seeds. Okay. So chili powder, plain chili powder. Um, so you don't use uh, the masala and the chili powder? No, just plain chili powder. Okay. This is the ginger and garlic. Crushed. Yes. Okay. This is the fine salt. Uh -huh. This is the garam masala and dhania mixed together. Okay, so that you can just get it from the shop. You yes. don't have to grind your own. No. All right. And that's the turmeric. Okay. And a little sugar I have. So it's basically to take out the acidic of the chutney itself. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then over here, I have my tomatoes. Okay. This is the tomato paste. So this you can puree. actually buy it from the shop itself. Yes. Okay. It come in cans. Okay. Yes. All right. So what does it do to the curry itself? It thickens the curry okay. and it gives it a nice texture as well. Okay. All right. And then over. Then I've got curry leaves. Mm -hmm. I've got my dania. That's for just for the garnishing yes. of the curry. I have oil. Uh -huh. I have my, I, I use a clove of um, garlic. Garlic, yes. So okay. the whole one I use it. Okay, okay. And that's my um, onion. onions. And, and this is chili. Okay. This is optional. The eggs yes. you can optional. use that if you want to. Yes. If not, you can actually ha also add um, boiled gem squash to your fish curry as well. Yes. And then I see you've got brinjal Benjol, as well. Yes. And in the last series of passing it on, we showed you how to preserve the brinjal from not getting a black or brown when it's uh, take cut into two pieces. And Auntie Lisa, this is your tamarind water. Yes. We also showed you in the last episode of passing it on, um, where we showed you how to prepare the tamarind. It's basically soaked in water, so it gives the fish curry a nice uh, yes. thickness tangy and taste. a tangy taste yes. as well. Yes. Okay, so Auntie Lisa, we, yes. what fish do we have here? We have white steam brass. Okay, a little about uh, white steam brass. In fact, my dad, uh, when, um, when we go to buy fish, he told us that when the eye of the fish is yes. clear, then the fish is fresh. Am I yes. correct? Yes. And if it's red, then it's not a good yes. fish. And uh, this fish can actually grow uh, like one meter long and it can weigh 30 kgs. And, that's, and this fish is quite versatile, it's quite easy to eat. The reason being, it's got just one just center bone. Yes. It's not like the other fish where they have too many thorns yes. and so on. And you can choke on that. So kids can also have the steam rust. So this is the ingredients for the fish curry. Okay, now for the marinating of the fish. Um, usually at home, I just put it into the curry, but this, I say it's a different way, a technique of cooking the fish curry. So, yes. Auntie Lisa, can you show you show us what you're going to do? Yes, I will take the fish uh -huh. and I'll just place so it So, the here. fish has been cleaned? It's cleaned and it's cut and okay. it's washed. All right. Okay. So, I'm going to take a little salt yes. and I'm just, just going to sprinkle, sprinkle over it. That. Okay. Can we use rough salt as well? No, no, you can't use rough salt on this. Okay. Or oh, because it's uh, the texture yes. of the fish as well. Okay. Then we're going to take some ginger garlic. Okay. That's basically to take the smell of yes. the, the rawness of the yes. fish. Okay. And then we're going to use some ginger uh, garam masala, garam masala okay. and dhania powder. Okay, okay. All right. All right. So you're just going to mix that. Right. And, and then we're going to use some chili powder mm -hmm. and then we're going to mix all together. Okay. On the so fish. the chili powder is just to make it a bit hot as well. Yes. And so it gives a color to the fish. Yes. Okay. So we're going to do this. Yes. So we're going to do it nicely because... Yeah, you why have to mix it quite yes. nicely. Why I put the salt first because the salt have to absorb. Okay, okay. You know? Yes. So we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, as you can see the fish is nicely coated now. Uh, do you have to leave this to stand or can you just uh, marinate it and then fry it? Uh, normally what I do, mm -hmm. I fry it straight away but you can marinate it for a long Okay, so it actually time. gets into the, into the, the inner fish, of the fish yeah. as well. Okay. 
All right. So this fish now is ready for frying. For the frying of the fish, as you can see, Auntie Lisa has marinated the fish. Auntie Mich uh, Lisa, you're going to show us how to do this? Yes, we're okay. going to put the oil first. This is about half a cup of oil, yes. which I'm going to just pour in here. Okay. All right, so you just have to just let the let oil get a bit yes. hot. Okay. So, Auntie Lisa, how long have you been cooking? I've been cooking from the age of 11 years old. Oh my God. That, that time we were playing outside. <laughs> okay, and you were cooking. Yes. And uh, what was your favorite uh, meal? I'm very simple. Mm -hmm. I like vegetable. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. She loves vegetable, and loves your husband, I guess, he don't like vegetable. No, he loves mutton. Yeah, that I heard so. And uh, the fish. Uh, with this um, amount, is it just like one kilo, or it's just one point one? One point one kilo, uh, yeah. and it can feed like about how many people? It feed about four or five people. Okay. Okay. Right. So I think the oil is almost ready. So we're gonna take fish and just yes. place it in. Okay. As you can see it's starting to fry. The oil is at the right um, heat as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm gonna... Auntie Lisa, I see uh, you haven't put the head of the fish. No, I don't put the head of the fish. Some yes. people like some it. Some people, yeah, I know. And some people when they look at it, they, they get they turned get, away yes. as well. Okay. So okay. I don't really. All right. Okay, so that goes in. Can. Okay. okay, so we just have to. How long are you going to cook it for? Maybe about five minutes. Five minutes, okay. So once, just wanted to get it a bit brown. Once it's a bit brown, okay. then we turn it okay. on two sides. Yes. And then you take it out. Okay. But also, can you use just the fish into the curry without frying it? I know some people do that. Yes, you can. Okay. But I prefer uh, this yes. because. It gives it a very nice taste. Okay, okay. So the taste is different when yes. you're actually frying the fish before you put it into yes. the chutney itself. Yes. Okay, as you can see, the fish is uh, getting um, brown a bit. Yes. And I can see the center bone in here yes. as well. Okay. And uh, the one thing about steamed rice, it doesn't break as well no. easily because no. it's quite compact yes. as well. Okay. And that is why we use steamed rice because of the break. There's no breaking. Okay. You can use it in biryanis as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. And... Um, Okay, so you, if it's just getting a bit brown there. Yes. Okay. So we just turn it. Okay. How many times are you going to turn it? Only twice. Okay. So you want to do that? Okay. Okay, as you can see, she's turning and the chili powder and the spices that she's used is nicely coated as well. And it's smelling quite nice. In fact, you can actually have this with your dog curry right now. Just like this. Without making the fish curry. Am I yes. correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you feel your kids don't want the fish curry, you can just give them the fried fish. Yes. Okay. And it's, it's not even breaking, so no. it's quite good. And it smells nice as well. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that a bit. So Auntie Lisa, do you have any fishermen in your family? Yes, my son-in-law, okay. Owen. Okay. He loves fishing. And does he go and just feed the fish or catch the fish? I think he feeds the fish. Oh. Because he never came home with nothing. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, <laughs> but my husband, he catches the fish. Oh, yeah. So you're I'm a lucky you're quite, wife. You're quite that. lucky. You're yes. quite lucky. <laughs> okay. And um, in fact, with the steam grass, you, you don't actually need an expensive bait. It's yes. just, uh, it's just basically your normal, you know, sardine that you get, taking sardine and feeding into your next fish. That's the, that's the bait that you get. You can use a normal tack line as well for, for steam brass. And yes. yeah, so it's quite an easy fish to catch as well. Yes. Okay, so the, the, the fish is ready now. Yes. It's fried nicely. So we're going to go into the next step now. Okay, as you can see, the fish has nicely fried. Thank you, Auntie Lisa, for helping me, for letting me help you to fry this fish. And as you can see, it's getting a bit brown as well. And we just added more portion to this. So, it's getting nicely brown. Okay. So, basically, the fish is starting to get a bit brown as well, so which means it's cooked. Okay, so this is ready for the next step of our fish fry.
Okay, Auntie Lisa, are you going to show us how to prepare the chutney for the fish? Yes, yes. And we use basically, the she's going to use the same oil. Yes. Okay, if yes. you want to do that. The same oil that we use to fry the fish, so there's no wastage as well. We're going to use to prepare the, the chutney. Okay. And we're going to add our... The onion. The onion. All right. So that's like about how many onions? One big onion. One big onion. Okay. We'll have some of the syrup. Okay. We're just going to add some spices to that. Just the, the mustard, mustard seed. Okay. And that's the, is that a jeera? Huh? Jeera, yeah. Okay. And one chili. All right. So she's got about five green chili. That just to make the curry a bit hot. Right. Okay. Stir it. Okay. Stir that a bit. It's already starting to get brown. Okay. Okay, I think you can. Okay, she's just gonna stir that a bit. So the the more onion you use in the curry, what does it do to the curry? It gives it a bit of a sweet taste. Yes. And it it's very nice. It, okay. You know, it and it also thickens the yes. the whole curry itself. Okay. okay. As you can see, it's quietly mixed with the uh, mustard seed as well. And uh, the jeera, can you use crushed jeera instead of just the whole jeera? You can, but I prefer using the whole jeera. Okay, so yeah. Auntie Lisa prefers the, the whole jeera. Okay, so the onion is getting ready. You can okay. add chili so powder. after that, you're going to add your chili powder. Okay. So you're going to use how many of that? We use two tablespoons of this. Okay, so she's using two tablespoons of that, but we're using a smaller spoon. Uh, so if you're using it at home, two tablespoons, a normal tablespoon will do. So she's going to mix that. Okay, as you can see, the, uh, the onion is nice and red as well. So this is going to be a nice hot fish curry. Okay. Then we're going to use some turmeric. Okay, she's going to add turmeric powder to that as well. This is also like two tablespoons. Okay, so that's also two tablespoons, but as you can see, we've got a mini spoon. So if you are uh, wondering. And we're going to use some of the garam masala garam and masala. dhania So powder. that's crushed garam masala and dhania powder, and dhania powder together. Okay, we're we'll just about just two tablespoons. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to mix. It's just going to mix that a bit. And it's got a nice spicy aroma right now. And I see uh, your chili, you didn't cut it like in two pieces, you just slid that in the yes, center. Yes. Is there a reason for that? Or? I just feel it looks nice yes. instead of cutting in two. Okay, and it gets dissolved yes. in the curry and you can't find the chili. So this is, it's quite old as well. Right, so we put in the uh, tomatoes. You're going to add your tomatoes. Yes. yes. Uh, any reason why you have... Um, Slice tomato instead of grated. It's, it's just an option you like. Yeah. Okay. She's just gonna mix that a bit. Okay, and it's a nice colour as well. Let it cook a little. Okay, and then you add the the tomato puree. Yes. Okay, alright. So we're just gonna let this uh, curry simmer a bit, uh, let it cook a bit and then we're going to add the puree. Okay, back to the chutney. Okay, is that cooked under the Yes, you can see it's looking very nice. Okay, it's so as you can see, the yes. tomato has dissolved. Dissolved. It's nice. Very, very nice. Okay. So we're going to put some ginger garlic. So she's going to add ginger garlic to that. Two tablespoons. Okay. We're going to put some of the brinjal. The brinjal. Okay, she's adding the brinjal to that. Yeah, um, if viewers don't eat brinjal, can they just leave it out? It's just an option. Just an option. Okay. Okay. So we we'll just let it cook a let little. Okay. I'm not forgetting the salt. We're just going to add some salt to that. Okay. Just a bit of salt. You like salt, Auntie Lisa? No, it's because 
that have to go into the chutney and the and brinjal. The brinjal as well. yes. Okay, okay. Okay, so that needs to cook a bit. Cook a bit. And then after that, you're going to add the. And I have the curry leaf and the. Um, uh, the puree. Puree, yes. Okay. Okay, now to the next ingredient. Antelisa is the brinjal cooked. Yes. Okay. Okay, as, as you can, can see, see the color of the brinjal. Yes. And the chutney is going on very well. It's looking very nice now. Okay, so now you're going to add the. I'll have the tomato puree. Okay. So you're just going to put that in there. This is one can of it. So can you use this can? Okay. You look at the quantity yes. of your fish. Okay, okay. And because you need for fish curry, you need a lot of gravy. Okay. So okay. you're making a lot of gravy. All right. So she's just mixing that. As you can see, it's like the chutney and the tomato puree is nicely dissolved. Yes. And it's nice and thick. We're going to add some curry layer. Okay. So that's just to give the flavor. Okay, curry leaf. And is that curry leaf from your neighbor's garden? It's from my garden. Okay. I thought it's from Auntie Pangela's garden. No, no, it's from my garden. Okay. So this is, you're going to add this now? Oh, uh, no, we want to use the... Um, the uh, dan. No, no, no. The turmeric first. Okay. So we're going to add the tamarind. Tamarind. That has been already dissolved. Okay, it's nice and thick as well. So that just gives that uh, the tanginess to the fish curry. And also the color changes, am I correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Am I right in saying, Auntie Lisa? Yes, the, um, yes. Everything is changing, yeah. Okay. And now you can see the thickness of it. Yes. The texture. Yes. Okay, I Give had a less at home because I have problem with vertigo. Okay. Because of the tamarind. Okay. Too much of tamarind actually lowers my um, my um, pressure down. Okay. So I try to add a little bit of tamarind to the curry okay. itself. So if you suffer with vertigo and so on, you need to just monitor your, your intake of the tamarind in your okay. curry. Okay, and then you let that cook a bit. Let it cook a bit. Okay, and a little about your grandchildren. How many grandchildren do you have? I have uh, two grandchildren. Yes. Uh, one girl and boy. Hey, uh, Ethan and Peyton. And they keep you on your feet? Yes, I'm okay. grandmom all day, yes. Monday to Friday. Okay, so she's got <laughs> quite a handful and you still cook? Yes, I clean the home. Oh my, okay. I do everything. Oh, that's great. As you can see, she's <laughs> really multitask. And uh, your fish curry, do the grandkids eat that as well? Ethan loves it. Is it? Okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, at home, my daughters and my husband don't eat it. Oh, okay. It's only my two son-in-laws and I. And oh, okay, so they like fish curry yes, as well. Yes. Okay, so let's just go let's back check. to the curry. As can you can you see, it's starting it? to yes. work. You can smell that sour. Yes, yeah. You can actually smell that sour, sourness of that curry. And that's how fish curry has to be. We'll just leave it a little bit. Yes. And then, uh, then we'll put in the fish. So you're going to have the fish now? Yes. That. Okay. Yes, we're going to have the fish. You can add it on. Okay. So we're just going to drop this in there. You can drop it. Okay. As you can see, I'm just putting the fish in there. Okay. I'm just going to keep this one piece for me. I've been eyeing this fish quite some time. Okay. But you don't stir. You mm -hmm. just, you have to shake the pot. Oh, okay. So you don't break you don't the fish. break the fish. Mm -hmm. So you're going to let that cook a bit? Yes. For about five minutes? Five minutes. Okay. Fine. Okay, back to the fish curry. As you can see, it's nicely uh, it's thick as well. Yes. Just one mistake, Auntie Lisa. I need to okay. apologize to you. Okay. I, we were also busy stealing that little piece of fish <laughs> that I forgot to put the garlic in there. So it's there okay. is garlic added in. And while I stole the fish, I didn't know there was a big fish bone in there. Mm -hmm. So no more stealing for me. So Auntie Lisa, you're going to add the? We had the boiled eggs. Okay, this is optional. This you is don't optional. have to. Okay. No. So you're just going to put that in. Me. You can actually add prawns to that as well, yes. I remember. And yes. even my sister-in-law, Uma, she puts germ squash into it. Yes. So you can add that you as well, add lots, which is quite nice. Okay. Once this is done, yes. and you had 
You just have to mix it a bit. Yes, okay. but not too much because then you break the fish. The fish, yeah. In and fact, you normally use you take the pot and you and you just like okay. You can show the viewers. Okay, yes. that is how you shake the pot. Because you don't, you don't take a spoon and stir because you're going to break the fish itself. You yes. want the fish all as well. So the fish curry is ready now, and you can garnish this. You can do that. Okay. So you're just going to put some dania on it just yes. to give it a color and some taste as well. Okay. So the fish curry is now ready. And now for the serving of the meal, we've got two options that we're going to show you. Auntie Lisa, uh, yes. could you tell them what you're going to do here? This is basmati rice. Okay. So I'm going to put some on the, on the plate. Okay. Do that. Okay, so you can have that, the fish with rice right. as well. Rice, yes. Okay. Is that right. enough? Yeah. Okay, and then you're going to have the fish to that. Then we're going to have some fish curry. Okay. As you can see, it's nicely cooked. It looks nice and yummy as well. Okay, that's the egg to that. And then, is that your husband's special chili yes, pickle? Yes, this okay. is the chili pickle. Okay, so we're going to have that. I think you rather had more than two because two won't be enough for Uncle Stan. Okay, we can add the whole bowl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and then you're just going to garnish that. Just going to garnish this. So, this looks absolutely divine. This is your fish curry with your basmati rice, bit of chili pickle. You've got a boiled egg as well. So, that's option one. Now, option two, um, as you can see, I've, I've already got um, it's hard porridge. They call it kali, and it was done by uh, Auntie Lisa's husband, Uncle Stan. So, I'm going to show you how in the olden days in barracks when we lived, um, money was quite scarce and, and we were limited to the food supply in our homes and because we had so many siblings and the family numbers were quite large, uh, parents had to you know, feed every one of them. So what they should do, they should actually take the scully, make it into a ball and they make a little hole in it. So you put more curry into the hole and then in that way you're not using too much of the curry itself because mealy, mealy meal was quite expensive that time. So I'm going to show you how to make that ball. Okay, so you're just going to take that in your palm and you're going to roll that. Okay, it's a bit sticky as well. So you just roll that. As you can see, it's a nice ball. Okay. I'm going to make it a little bigger ball because I think Uncle Stanley is going to eat this and one small is not going to surface for him. So I'm just going to make this. Okay. So I'm going to place this here, as you can see, that's the ball. So I'm going to just press that in down. And this is how my granny, my late granny, she did this for us. She presses it down. Okay. And then you're going to make a hole in the center. Okay. As you can see, there's a hole in the center. Okay, and now for the curry. Okay, just gonna place this. So as you can see, now we were like restricted to one piece of fish per meal. So what they do, they put in more gravy in the center, like this, so it overflows onto the side. They're actually trying to camouflage the intake of in the food that we're having and then they just take a small piece of fish and they'll just have it on the side just like that okay we're going to use eggs but those days we we shouldn't put two combination together because we had to bring the meal right through the week so that's done just going to garnish this a bit and you can add your pickles as well to this and this is a simple fish curry with curry Auntie Lisa, thank you so much for being on our show today thank and you. for sharing your recipe with us. It's quite an easy recipe as well. Thank I'm you. definitely going to try it at home. And to the viewers out there, remember, eating is a necessity, but cooking is an art. So make sure you pass it on to the next generation. Till next time, God bless and take care.